Welcome back to Foundry Fastlane. I'm Connor, and today we'll be diving into the learn.palantir.com class, Speedrun Your First Workflow. This course aims to describe at a high level the key platform components of Palantir Foundry that provide value, namely data pipelines, ontologies, and the workshop app. These three combined really make up a ton of the value that Palantir Foundry provides. And this course is aimed to give you a high level understanding of how those three components work together. Ready? Let's jump in. As always, navigate to learn.palantir.com, specifically the Speedrun Your First End-to-End -end Workflow course. This is the course you'll be following along throughout this video and where you can download required inputs to the process. Let's get started. First, let's level set on the problem. So we work for a office goods corp company, and we recently went through some M&A activity. We acquired a company called Bureau SAS. This in turn led to us having two different ERP systems that is leading to headaches in terms of order fulfillment. We have the Bureau system and we have the Office Goods Corp original system. And now that both of these ERPs are under one roof, we're having trouble managing the fulfillment of orders. This is leading to unfulfilled orders, unhappy customers, et cetera. So let's talk, how do we fix this? This is a common business problem and there has to be a better way. Enter Palantir Foundry. We can take the external system data from office goods and the bureau, ingest them into one data pipeline and build one source of truth data set off of those two pipelines, those live systems, which would be our orders. Then we create our ontology on top of that and we assign some actions that we can apply in that ontology. So we'll have our order object in our ontology. And then within that order object, we have actions we can take on it between assign that order and close that order. Lastly, layered on top of our ontology is our workshop application. That's how the end users would interact and view all of our orders, see what's open, what needs action, and what we can close out because maybe it was canceled or we just decided we weren't going to go through with it. As you can see, the two user groups that would be interacting with this whole process, mainly the workshop app, is the fulfillment operators and the fulfillment managers. By the end of this use case, we will understand how each of these core components between pipeline builder, ontology objects, and workshop apps all bridge together a business problem to deliver actionable insights and results. To start our project, navigate to files. Here, select your learning project. If you don't have one, just go ahead and create a new project here. Click into here. And next, let's create our actual project folder. You'll notice I favorited my project folder here so that under files and favorites, I can quickly navigate to our target project folder. Once within the project folder, let's get our input data sets in. So you'll see in the ingestion portion of the Palantir course, we have three downloadable files. You can either manually download these to your downloads folder and upload them via upload files here, or you can ingest them from Marketplace. Once your installation is complete, you can click view installation. You'll see the log here of the data set that was brought in. And I'll go ahead and click into the location here, which will bring you back to my folder. You'll now see the three data sets within our demo speed, uh, speed run your end to end workflow. It's worth noting that these data sets are almost like a snapshot in time of any company's data. In a real world situation, you would probably have like an integration service of some sort plugged into your CRM or ERP, wherever you're managing your orders out of, um, where it would be like a live sync type scenario. But for this demo, we are just specifically using these static data sets. Now that we have our data sets loaded into our project, we need to ingest that into a data pipeline to kind of standardize that data into our goal of having all data in one order data set. That's going to require a lot of data transformations and cleaning and actually dropping probably columns off of our sets. Of course, data joins. You see here in this diagram, this is what the low code, no code app in Palantir looks like. That's pipeline builder. 
we've done a bunch of this in my previous videos and through the training on learn.palantir.com already. So we should be very familiar with this and it should be more of a recap. So with that said, let's get in here and actually create our pipeline. We'll give this a name. You'll see here that we have a difference between batch pipeline and streaming pipeline. This kind of goes to what I had just noted beforehand that this is a batch scenario where we're kind of using a static group of data. Whereas if we had a streaming pipeline, AKA live data would be flowing in as it's ready. We would be selecting this scenario. Now with our newly created pipeline for orders, let's add foundry data in. So here you'll see that data, all of the input data sets, we'll select these and click add data. That will populate them into our pipeline builder as kind of start nodes. You'll also notice down here in the uh, preview panel down below, if I click into any of these data sets, we can see samples of the data. This sample will be reflective as we kind of manipulate the data with transforms and joins throughout the flow, it will reflect live down below in the sample. Very useful for kind of debugging and just following along how the pipeline is maneuvering data. Kicking off our data transformations, we'll start with the Bureau. We'll hover or click into it and click Transform to actually launch our first Transform node. In this node, we'll be doing a couple things. Mainly, we're going to be casting this column here that says order due date from type date to type timestamp. That's just really the variable type of the data within that column. You'll see here we have some that are strings, aka text, some that are integers, aka numbers, etc. cetera. Um, we just want a little more information on this due date. So we're going to change that from date to timestamp. To do so, let's click transform and we'll look for cast. Here we can find our column order due date and we'll change this to timestamp and we can go ahead and click replace or apply next let's look for filter filter rows specifically we're going to change this to keep rows actually we're, we're fine there all conditions is fine and let's look for order id look into columns and order id here we're looking for is not null and we're going to treat empty strings as null that's basically saying if there's no order id for any given row that we're going to remove it from the data set. Obviously the order ID is the unique ID for an order and we don't want that to be empty. That would, that would not make sense. So let's go ahead and apply that. Lastly, we're going to look for normalize column names. And all of our settings are solid here. Let's click apply. Before we get out of here, let's make sure we name our transform to clean bureau. Save one more time and close back out to the pipeline. You'll notice now that we've applied this transform and we're, we're actually selecting this transform here, if I scroll over, sorry, it's, it's already defaulted here. Any columns that we edit automatically move up to the front of our preview in the data set below. So you'll see this order due date is already changed to timestamp. We've already removed probably some empty rows if I had to guess. Next, let's clean the office goods data. We'll do the same thing. We'll click transform. And first we're going to cast again. Here, we're going to cast due date time to type timestamp as well. Click apply. We're going to look for filter rows again. Order ID is not null. Click apply. This time we're also going to drop columns. And for our drop columns, we're going to look for order placement date. That's it, click apply. We're also going to rename columns We'll click due date time. That's the column that we actually just cast as a timestamp. And we're going to call that order underscore due underscore date, order due date. You'll see when we rename a column, it actually says new on the right side rather than replace. Click apply. Lastly, we're going to normalize columns again. Normalize column names. I think our settings are good here and we can click apply. Again, we'll make sure we save and we'll close back out to the pipeline. Always remember to rename your transforms for best practice. Before we continue any further, I like to format my data pipelines with some kind of legend colors. So let's actually change our inputs to be a light blue and we will just do in the legend inputs. This will help us determine as we get more hectic in our data pipeline, a color code for inputs, outputs, joins, etc. It'll just help us visually be able to understand the pipeline a little better. Next, let's start our table joins. So we're gonna take our cleaned office goods table 
and join it to consolidated customers. To do so, click Clean Office Goods, click Join. We'll select our other table to join on the graph, so Consolidated Customers, and click Start. Before we configure our join, let's remember to name our join before I forget. We'll set our match condition as Customer ID and Office Goods Customer ID. Additionally, let's remove Bureau Customer ID and Office Goods Customer ID because I don't really need those two. I only need consolidated customer ID and customer name. With that, let's click apply and close. Next, let's configure our bureau join to the same input data set of consolidated customers. Click clean bureau, click join, select consolidated customers, start. Let's rename our join. Let's set our match condition to customer ID and bureau customer ID and deselect the columns that we don't need. So office goods and bureau customer IDs. Click apply and close. Next, let's just clean up this flow to mimic what it looks like in the training. Mine looks kind of ugly right now. Rather than drag and drop everything around the screen like I just did actually, there's a quicker way and more efficient way. So go ahead and click layout nodes and that will automatically format your data pipeline in the best practice way. So instead of that shoddy way I just showed you, just go ahead and click layout nodes. Next, with our data pipeline looking a little better, let's union our data sets into one master set. So click office goods, click union, select your other table and click start. Once in the union, let's give it a name, that's union orders and click create union. You'll see a preview of our table, and this is all we need to do at this point. Click close and back to the flow. Let's click into our union orders. As before, we can look at our preview below, and we should see that we're previewing 500 rows, and we can see our union data set here. All looks good. To use this union data now in any other part of Palantir Foundry, like sourcing the ontology, we need to create a data set. That'll take this table into an actual data set, no different than the ones that we had as inputs that we can leverage with other Palantir tools. So let's do that. Click Add Output, New Data Set, give it a name. We'll do All Orders. You'll see here we can remove any columns for our data set if we needed to, but for us, we're fine and we can just click Save. Next, let's click Deploy. Click Deploy Pipeline. Once you've clicked Deploy Pipeline, You'll see the status here, running task, and you'll, it'll give you your duration. This may take a couple minutes, so just check back in a few minutes and we'll continue. While this is deploying, you'll notice my legend here got a little messy while we were working on the pipeline, so let's clean that up. I added a default color node for non-inputs because I wanted my inputs to be blue. I want other actions to you know, be a default color, just like white. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click through these and clean those up. Now that we've deployed our pipeline, let's navigate to the ontology. This is where we're going to build our ontology. Click Control J and search for Ontology Manager. Now that we are within the ontology, let's take a minute to summarize what an ontology is in the context of Palantir. Think of it like a blueprint of your business world inside Foundry. Instead of just raw tables and columns, an ontology turns your data into business objects like customers, orders, or products. Each object connects to others through relationships, almost like a map of how your business is actually working. The power here is that once your data is modeled as an ontology, workflows, apps, and agents all interact with it in real business terms, not just like Excel rows and IDs linked together through a system. That's what makes Palantir so much more than a data warehouse. It's like a living digital twin of your organization. To create our order object within the ontology, click new object type, and we're going to select use existing data source because we're looking for that all orders data source that we just created in the data pipeline. Find your project folder, click open and click that blue table kind of outline icon and click select. Click next. Here in the name to avoid any overlap with anyone else doing courses, let's do your first username. I'm gonna do demo because I already have an object called just my name. Click next. Here you'll see the properties of this ontology object. We will select our primary key. That's our unique identifier for any order ontology object. We'll do order ID. And for our title, that's kind of the display name of the object instance. Let's do 
item name. Click next. We'll see we have some generic action types here that we can take with any um, ontology object here. This is kind of the classic create, read, update, delete type scenario. We'll come back to this later, but for now we'll click create. With that, let's save our ontology. Here we'll get a change log of everything that was updated. That's fine. Click save to ontology, save changes. Here at the top left, we'll see a spinning icon. That's our kind of indexing status. So we're taking all of the data rows that we kind of filtered and cleaned from our raw data sets from the Bureau and Office Goods, cleaned all of those into one data set and then sourced the ontology with that all orders data set. We're going through, or rather the system is, and indexing all of those rows into the ontology. Give this a few minutes and we'll check back to continue. While our ontology index runs, this is a good time to stop for part one of this video. So to summarize, in part one, we took raw data from our orders bureau, orders office goods, and consolidated customers, created a usable and actionable all orders data set with the cleaned and transformed data from those inputs, and created a ontology off of our orders data set. In the next video, we'll build the actual workshop app that end users will interact with and configure the actions that they can take on the data. See you next time.